hopefully you're able to um, take a look. And sometimes what I feel happens is when you get into the, once the year starts rolling, uh, it comes fast and it comes furious. And sometimes if you step back and take a look at a physical list of all the things you're doing, it, it's, it's daunting. I mean, it's amazing the things that happen. So um, it's important. I want to come circle back to this a little bit later. So our, our logo mascot, I'll put this up here. I want to just talk through this briefly. Um, brand new school legacy this year. So um, coming up with the logo and mascot, it's, it's could be simple, but it could be a process. And we wanted to make it a process that involved um, uh, people along the way. So um, what we did is I started out and utilized Twitter, getting information out to families, and they could tweet back at, at hashtag legacy logo, and we got some ideas from families, talking it over. And then from there, we looked in our, once school actually got up and running, into the actual classroom. So every class did a little thing where they came up with a list of two to three ideas, their top three list, and so forth. And we kind of generated that. And then from there, our leadership team met when we what, kind of whittled that down to those, um, those, and it kind of became clear the direction we were going to go. And then I um, worked then also with a local business, that uh, former parent of local business, and then um, our art teacher got involved as well, really living the four, four C's of collaborating and creativity and critical thinking and communication. So the process was a great way to get to where we are. We have a couple versions of this, but just uh, when you look at this, everything's very purposeful in here. Um, the colors, were, uh, legacy is located in the wilds. So it's kind of a wild theme, you know, we're out in kind of that jungle of the wilds. But the blue representing the sky, and the sky's the limit for our kids. There's a reason we have blue in there, plus we can tie it to a Cheyenne Mustang where they'll be headed eventually, but that sky's the limit for our kids. Um, the green representing grass and growth. We're growing our kids. Every day is a growth mindset with our staff and with our kids, and so there's a purpose to that as well. And then the lions, uh, you know, we didn't have, we're in elementary school, so it's maybe a little less ferocious. Lines are a little friendlier looking, but there's a purpose that there's three of them. There's a male, there's a female, and there's a cub in between them for a reason. That those cubs are our kids, and we take care of them at all costs, just like a pride of lions will do. And so there's a real purpose to every part of that, and so it becomes very powerful when we took the time to get that logo and that mascot um, where we wanted. So that's just another thing that we love to do. So, best in all the land, team building. Um, that's good old Rocky Balboa there. So what I did with this was a challenge again when we started our year off. I'm, I'm also trying to paint a picture of the mindset I'm trying to create with the staff in this building, ultimately our kids, and so our culture within our families to understand where we're going. Um, one of the challenges I sat with our leadership team and our first staff meeting is I said, I posed the question, what will happen, will have to happen at Legacy Elementary for, the, for people to want to write books about the school and to set tours up from around not just the metro or the state or this country, but the world, saying, we have to come to Legacy to see this, this, this. And so that's not a statement, that's nothing out of arrogance, but that's a mindset I wanted our staff to sit and think, well, we probably have to have this, hit this mark for that, for achievement. We have to have this, we have to look at our health and wellness, we want to do this to the next level. So that started a conversation, which isn't finished, this is an ongoing fluid process, but this is a mindset we're looking at saying, what are we going to do that this is going to be a school that sets a trail that blazes through places that maybe have never been done before, and then people can follow our lead. And so that's one of the mindsets that we're really trying to and looking to instill in what we're doing at Legacy. And along with that, even as we come up to our, we've gone through our goal setting process now individually, and even from our next um, staff development here in, in the end of the month, we're going to be looking at ideas where I just say, you know, what's one thing you can do individually, one thing you can do that's going to help kids, that you would look to grow or to change or to add to my toolbox, then expand a little bit. What's one thing your team can do, your grade level team, your department, what could you do? Think about that, and then our building. So these types of questions, what I'm always doing as a leader, I'm always looking at how are we being reflective? How are we stretching ourselves? Good enough never is. We're always looking to move forward and not move forward in a way to add another thing to the plate. It's just that mindset we're saying, you know, doing good stuff is okay, but we've got to move it up. We've got to move the needle over further. So that's just kind of a painting a picture. So fit for life, legacy health and wellness, I call them our big rocks. Some of the things that we're doing, at Legacy that, again, like I say, I don't think that um, a lot of things that we're doing are maybe unique. Maybe there's a couple things we're doing, but I just want to share a few of the things um, that we're doing. Starting with active classrooms and active recess, both of those. We've had certified staff, all trained, working in partnership with 
Um, NDSU is a good partner with, with us on a lot of different things, and uh, our certified staff have all been trained in active classrooms. And so we're building in things purposefully along our days, and I'm going to talk about a few more specifics within the classroom that what kids are calling, uh, we call them brain boosts, as opposed to even brain breaks. We're not looking to give the brain a break, we're looking to boost it and give a little shot of natural adrenaline and get it up and running. And so we're looking at that purposefully. And an active recess, we're looking at our, our classified staff for a few reasons. Um, we have snow days, we have rain days, we have days where we're in, it's a little too chilly outside. And so what are we doing that we're active and purposeful? I love board games as much as the next person, but we're looking at, we all, we talk about our daily five for, for our literacy stuff. We have daily five for math maybe, but maybe a daily five for our indoor recess. We're looking at purposeful ways that when they're in these rooms, we have multiple activities going on so that there's options for kids so that we're engaged and we're moving and being purposeful. And another X factor with that is when you involve we have an art team with that, our active recess committee. Now you're involving your classified staff is a huge role in pushing these things forward. And there's residual effects from the very purposeful, whether it's zones and activities on your playground and how you do things. How do you, how do you manage that playground? When someone's not following the expectation instruction, it's trying not to remove them because they need that activity. We have different choice activities, different areas where they're still active and they're out there. And then we can still work with them to learn the, learn the skills we need them to learn so that they can still participate. And so when we're all involved with that, um, that helps create that positive culture in your building because in most buildings, a lot of, that, a lot of um, potential um, struggles, discipline-wise, for kids can come in those free times, those active competitive times. So now when you're, when you're proactively addressing those, not only are you promoting fitness forward, but you're also helping that, that culture, that building that positive culture. So um, we've talked about Fuel Up and some of the different things. We're no different, we're part of Fuel Up. And uh, I have big plans to have plenty of the future Super Bowl champion Vikings to come on up once we get going. And I say that a lot in my school because I got Packer fans in my school I have to deal with. So, but um, anyway, we're doing a lot of different things. And I think within that, even this, we've got a team of students that's here today too. Um, um, Mr. Gelso there. He, we, uh, even in the mornings at breakfast, we were up, he's up, been out dancing with the kids, right? The last five minutes of breakfast, we put on the music. And uh, I think it was Keep a Shuffle yesterday and uh, doing some different things like that. Kids love it, and we're looking at ways within our morning walk-in club we're looking to start, um, get up and dance day, what that's gonna be. Maybe we're gonna have different staff, just volunteering time, myself included. I'll take a day in the rotation. Uh, I love dance, teaching as well. I'm gonna have a video on that in a little bit. Um, just ways that we're doing a few things. It's not about managing kids just and getting them to do something. It's getting to do purposeful things that aren't just gonna be a legacy thing, they're gonna be a life thing. And that's the biggest thing is all the things we're doing, whether it's academic, health and wellness, it's this will benefit your life if, you, if it becomes embedded in you. And so I think that's one of the big things that we're always trying to drive home. And I always said when I was teaching, coaching, um, as a principal, I always, I always would beat kids to the question why. Why in the world would we even do this? I'll ask the question before they can say, why would we do this, Mr. M? I, we talk through it because when they can, when they, understand that and buy into the why, that's over then. We're not going to go there. Now let's just push forward and get it and go after it. So I think that's an important thing to look at. Um, I'm going to talk about lunch line redesign and, and what I call a cozy kitchen. We have uh, Jane Peterson here, my, my lead cook. She's here in the room as well. And she is great to work with because, and Jan Slipper, our director of food services in the district is here. Um, and what's great about that is I just mentioned it because um, they probably need to be the right person to work with me because I'm, my mind's always going. I'm always going and I'm trying to push um, in a purposeful way. I just want to make that clear. I'm not just a maverick, just, just let's go, let's do this. Another thing, another thing, another thing. There's a plan for everything and we go slow to go fast. Stephen Covey, um, one of my favorite lines from him is to go slow to go fast. And I always talk about that and we have a purpose to that and we roll it out in an appropriate way. But both Jane and Jan are great to work with when it comes to our lunchroom. We're looking at ideas that what can we do different here? And I'm going to just show a couple of these things in a minute. Um, but one of the things I'll even just talk about, we're trying to get there, is work. Um, Jane and I are looking at some groundwork on trying to create kind of a cozy kitchen. I guess one of the themes of legacy that we're looking to, to create is uh, a building when you walk in, I call it a home away from home. Um, creating a school that doesn't feel institutionalized, it feels like 
Um, man, I can't wait to just get there and just walk in and see what's going to be happening. Walk into my classroom. It's so great to be here. And the lunchroom, why do, you got, why do, why do people love going to Starbucks and caribou coffee or the little mom and pops um, coffee shops? Y yes, it's for the caffeine hit and for that type of stuff. But they're so fun and they're so comfy seating and it's this and it's these great places to be. It just feels so fun to be here. And so that's what we're trying to create even within our kitchen. When we walk in there, it's just this great warm, comfortable feeling as we go through there in that time of the day. So even little things like this, um, to do that takes time and effort, but that's a direction we're trying to go as well. Uh, the last thing I mentioned with playgrounds, and we're working with have, um, Nick, Nick here at Krennis, one of my PE teachers who's on our wellness team, our leadership team. Uh, a lot of different ideas and things, how we incorporate PE into academics and drawing that line to the two so they don't seem as separate silos. Um, but even like our playground area, I've talked about that a little bit. We're a little challenged in a new building because we haven't had grass all year. It's seated, but it's, we can't walk on it. We have a magical one, one path, a golden path of wood chips out to our play area, which is this big key. Um, but it's a little tricky because we can't really create the zones we want to yet, technically, because we don't have that. But we have a huge area of, of cement and concrete, and we put some work in our, our PE teachers, Nick and Logan, into looking at specific stencils, different things. We're going to paint some different four square things, but we have some different stencils that are very different, hopping over a log and walking like a crab and, and tight roping and things that are different kinesthetic motions for kids that will be fun to do, but they don't even know that they're working on these different things, but they'll be doing that. And that'll be uh, surrounding the perimeter of our, of our play area. And so again, purposeful things. I worked with the park district on our playground set. We have some different choices. We wanted to maximize that footprint and create an area of play that is maximum time for kids to be active and climbing and doing things. And so each portion of that um, has a plan. So there's a picture of our, there's the magical path right there. Let me tell you something. It took me weeks of trying to get that. That was a big thing to get that in. But this is a huge footprint, a lot of climbing things out here, a lot of different things to do, a lot of activity. We have a lot of green space here um, once our grass is, is up and in play and going from there. So now one thing I will mention, it's not officially, we're in the process of granting this as well. But I have a, another team that's super fired up about an orchard. And so we have a section that's kind of over here on our bill, but on this side, we're looking to be purposeful with an orchard, and not just some trees, but, but different types of uh, uh, vegetables and fruits that we're also going to create an area within it for learning so that they would have um, blogs and stuff for kids to sit on where teachers can come out there with kids and have lessons. We can harvest that fruit, and then we can learn our, our healthy cooking and how we use this stuff. And so a big project there as well. So again, more ties to the real world and to what we're doing. And just yesterday with Fuel Up, I mentioned um, earlier, a like kind of ties into this, is we had um, our wellness, our family wellness in town was just in our school and they're doing healthy cooking with our, our, our kids. And so they were making yogurt parfaits yesterday. And again, that ties back into an orchard. How can we use those apples and help them cook healthy? And I had a fifth grader, he was in my office, he brought me a, a yogurt parfait with some granola and fruit. And he was just telling me, he goes, I love to cook, Mr. Ram. And I said, perfect, now I love to eat. We're a great team. <laughs> so he brought that in to me and we had a great time. But think about that. They're, they're, they're having a great time. They're learning a skill, and it's a healthy skill. Now imagine that goes home and that ripple effect. That's the whole point. It's a ripple effect that keeps moving up. And so that's pretty cool. So here's one thing that I think is maybe a little bit unique to our building. What we've been doing is appetizer anyone. So right here. You look at this, there's our lunch area right there, there's the lunchroom. Okay, here's our lunchroom over here. Our kids come in from down here, they're coming in, it's a, you know, in the building there's a process to how kids come in and how they go out. So kids come in, now imagine you have hundreds and hundreds of second graders that come in at a time. What will typically happen at lunchroom when we have 20 minutes time, time to eat, okay? So, trying to get 100 kids in, as you know, get their food, sat down, eat, get back in the line where they're supposed to, and out in 20 minutes, that's not a lot of time, okay? So what I um, what I have been seeing and observing was we have a lot of line time. So yes, the first couple of kids get in, but you have probably five to seven minutes of just standing line time for kids. And you know, it's not that there's always a bunch of town pool or installed luxury going on there, but it's wasted time. And sometimes wasted in the fact that what's happening there. So we wrote a grant, part of the grant I wrote now is I use this is one of the purchases we purchased. It's a second serving tray, and this is fresh fruit and fresh vegetables right here, every day. So what happens now, our kids come in, 
from recess, directly from recess, half our class, or they'll come in directly from class, and they're hungry, just like any of us. And in 20, 30 minutes here, we're hungry, we're ready to eat, okay? So now what they do is, this is, this is voluntary, this doesn't cost anything else, they walk through and they can have an appetizer. And now they stand in line, and they're busy with their friends, eating healthy, fresh food, fresh vegetables, then they go into the lunchroom, get their entree, still get their salads and fresh vegetables, and come on out. And so as you can see, here's a picture. Here's the vision of it right here. They're in there, they're holding their snack, eating. By the time they get in, then they'll, they'll put that on their tray. It doesn't get thrown on the floor or anything. And it's uh, teaching life skills. And, and now they're eating another serving or so of fruits and vegetables without hardly even knowing it because they just come in and they're hungry. So again, this is a, it doesn't seem like a major thing, but kids are pretty excited about this. And they let us know, they let me and Jane know, you know, which fruits they like. I think they asked Jane one of the first days, what was that? What was it? Were they asking for cheese curds? Yeah. Yeah, I said, first, second, I think it was the first segment. Hey, you need any cheese curds in there this year? I'm like, oh, we're not on the fair here. Come on. Yeah, let me fruits and vegetables. You're a fun of it, of course. But the point is, um, it's unique and, and they love it. And yes, they love some more than others, but it's a great tool. So that's been pretty cool for us um, doing that. And there's a little lunch line redesign. We're also working with, I mentioned NDSU, we have uh, um, some partnerships there on just other things we can do, whether it's how you um, create some visuals, some fun, friendly visuals for food, or names of things, or, or food placement. Where do you place them? I asked one here, if one's getting taken more, I'll put one down at this end. Just experiment. Is that, does, and I didn't watch that. Are they taking more of that now? So product placement is a difference as well. So all these little things you do and then take note on it, no one has to know it, but all of a sudden now I'm putting that broccoli on that side of it, that's the first thing they see and they end up grabbing it and they're munching before they know it. So that's something that I think is um, unique and it's been going great and it's pretty exciting. Right here is another thing that uh, I think is, you know, we have it, we're, we're displaying it right here with a standing desk, but this is something that there's a lot of statistics out there there's short-term and long-term effects of something as simple as sitting. And when you're in a school, we sit. When we have meetings, we sit. And so there's multiple things. We talk, there's posture. Um, but there's, there's things that don't necessarily maybe directly affect kids in an elementary school, but it's those lifelong habits. Cardiovascular disease, obesity rates, diabetes, all these things, they do are affected by something as simple as being able to be up and standing and, and moving back and forth a little bit, and that doesn't even take into account the classroom manager. I have teachers now in my building that are, um, we're, we're getting to the point where my entire building, we're, we're, I'd say more flexible seating, and I'm gonna show a couple pictures on this in a minute, um, than just standing desks. But our teachers, I'm, I'm letting them go at their own pace, but we've talked about this, is at the forefront, and our teachers have flexible seating so the kids have options on what they want to do. They're not being forced to stand, they're not being forced to sit, or be in a stability ball, we're giving them options. And um, it's, it's really cool. I mean, I, I just, the, what happens when classroom management goes down, it's not like I look at that, I tell them, this is not about me having to do less work. This is you being able to keep kids with you engaged in the curriculum and in your activity, and that's what we're after. And then myself and I think the students are around supporting that, and pumping them up, and this is great, and well, look at this leadership, this is fantastic. And so that's what I ultimately after. So this is a, a slide I'm sure a lot of us have seen, but this is what we're all after here at the Healthy Summit. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to be up and we're trying to use brain boosts and standing desks and moving in the mornings and getting going because that means our heart moves, that means our blood flow is better, that means more oxygen comes to the brain, and that means we're active and ready to learn. We're alert. That's the simple truth about it, and that's a very powerful um, then that. So brain boost I mentioned is um, a lot of statistics on that, but we're looking to just engage yourself. So, let me play this. Walk to walk. So what this is here, this is, oh, back in late August, um, our first day of staff development. And staff didn't know about it or anything. So, and I'm going to talk about it in just a second. I'll just play this little clip for you. I told the teachers I was going to play it, and they were just slightly mortified, but they did great, real great. And if I had more time, we'd be moving these desks aside and I was gonna just do this live in here, but we just don't have the time. So, I'll just play this real quick. I need a little commentary too. You can shuffle here. Like it's elementary brain, but we'll just have staff development. Um, 
Here's a couple things. Number one, we practice what we preach. So I had them move the table side up and just sit and listen to me yap for an hour and a half or whatever the case was. And, and I said, all right, let's get over here and listen to this. But they didn't know. And then had the song, did it, they did great. So a couple things why I do that. Number one is the brain boost. They're no different. We're adults. We need to get ourselves alert and active as well. Secondly, is I want them to step out of their comfort zone because not every one of those are all those folks in that screen or dance instructors, believe it or not. And so what do we ask our kids to do all the time? We're always asking them to step out of their comfort zone. Someone who's never kicked a ball in their life, we're asking them to pee to help participate in basketball. Okay? I'm not good at math. We're asking them to do a math lesson. We're asking them, a writer to write who I, I can't even hardly formulate letters. It's all about comfort zone. So by having staff step out, it's, it creates a mindset of, hey, this isn't easy for me, but I can do it. So I think that helps translate to their kids what we're asking them. It becomes more, we become more sensitive to what we're asking our kids. And then the other X factor about it, if you ask me, is look at the fun. I've had requests for our next staff development coming up on November 30th. And I love, how about Copperhead Road, Mr. M? How about this one? And I said, I think the wobble is the one we're going to do next. But it's the fun. It's the culture building. We have a, a group that's here together, and we're having fun together. And they might not remember every single thing I talked about that mean, but I guarantee you they'll remember dancing the electric slide or the cupid shuffle and stuff like that. So that's some of the things that we're looking at with that why I was um, modeling that. In the classroom, flexible seating I've talked about, whole brain teaching, turn and talks, partner teaching, and I'll kind of move quickly through this. Um, but here's a couple of examples of classrooms, okay? Here's a fourth grade classroom, and we have to get creative right here. These stand these tables, and I do have tables in my building for a reason. Um, just naturally creates a collaborative feel when you have four, four um, students around a table. Some of our younger grades even have six. Um, it's a natural collaboration. And right here, we've had to get these little um, bed stands here to raise them up to the level of our intermediate grades. And so we got that stuff at Walmart. We got creative, and I had them look it up. And we used some grant money for it, and that's what we're doing. Okay. Here's an example of a flexible classroom here. Here's crates. Here's cushions. Here's stability balls. Here's chairs back there. Dog house over there. There's a uh, stage up in the front here, and th this is an example of many of our rooms are like this. And moving more towards this than even this. There's more flexible seating than just standing tables. And so I, I, I can't think of a place, we do have rooms that do have a table with some chairs for an option, um, but what you're finding, if you ask my staff, they'll say, this is the best thing I've ever done. Um, my kids are engaged, they're excited, discipline issues are going down, and that's, that's a big reason. So I think that's going real good for us. So this, I do want to show you just a little bit, a little clip of this. Here's whole brain and why this is so important. If you've been in, edu in education, you've heard of whole brain. You may have started whole brain at a basic level, or you may have uh, used it a bit. This is whole brain, I think, whole brain a little bit on, on like steroids to a point. This is a teacher that's exemplary at using this. And whole brain done right is not just about the same. Class, class, and you repeat back, class, class, now I have your attention. That's very basic level whole brain. Whole brain is engagement, it's activity, we're up and moving, and it's teaching, and it's results orientated. And so you see this, you'll see these brains are active, these kids are having fun, watch how they're teaching each other, and go into it. I just want to play a little clip of this for you. Um, touching the, the tip of the iceberg 
Um, and I was going to bring a clip of Marky in the morning. That's one thing I just want to showcase with our kids' leadership. I do a morning talk show on Friday mornings, Marky in the morning. The number one, I always say, the number one rated talk show in all the schools slash the only one. But, uh, but it's, the kids love it. It's a time for me that I can engage with the entire student body and the entire staff as well. And we have fun. I always I go live from a classroom every week. And I have guests every week showcasing kids and what they're doing, what they're learning. And I interview them. And it's a big deal. We record it. And it's up there. And we're, we're really moving that forward, too. That's going to go next level as well. Ultimately, I'm looking to have the kids take over that. I become a guest. We're looking to try and get green streets and go live. You know, wherever they're studying from. If they're studying in Egypt, we're going to come from the pyramids. And where are we at today? And that type of stuff. But we have a lot of fun with that. But as far as the kids, I have a fifth grade tech team that they run this. You know, this is last Friday is a prime example. They come in the morning, and I have kids, trust me, I just talked to a parent about this. They put a sticky note in there on Thursday night. They know exactly how early they got to get up because they got to be there early for tech team. And I had a student situation on this past Friday morning that I had to, had to deal with. And I, I just looked at my watch. So if I can get there by showtime, I'll be okay. That tech team, I just leave a note that says, here's the room. They get everything set up. They have the kids organized. They have the computer plugged in. They have my set ready to go. They have the kids knowing what they need to do. I'm ready to go. I walk and sit down. We're going. When I'm done, I say thank you and good night. They tear down. They bring it back and they come. It's real world. They take great pride. And now they'll be training the trainers going forward. So that leadership model, there, it's kind of real world. So that's just an example of another um, kind of mindset or what we're trying to do with that leadership foundation here in school. So I did, uh, I did mention. Um, Jobs and I just uh, one thing I want to highlight um, within leadership is jobs. Really, again, pushing every one of our classes have students that are applying for jobs, and we do that for a couple of reasons. A lot of you guys done something like that. They're a line leader. They're like, they're, they're in charge of the lights or technology. Um, but we have things like they're, they're the weather person. They're doing morning announcements. They're doing this. But I want to mention it for this reason. It, it's it's more, they actually apply. They actually have to apply for these jobs. I have about 40 applications for tech team from just fifth grade. And we read through them. You should see them detailed. They tell me exactly why they're good for it. That's real world. That's the real world when they're going to have jobs to apply for. But I think one of the biggest things is when I look at my staff, when we have a challenging student, okay, Mr. Kelsey and I have a student, the first thing that I ask the teacher, what can we do to take this energy and use it for positive? How can we turn this into a leadership role of responsibility for them? They like to blurt. They like to talk. Boy, they, we're going to use that voice for You need to be that morning announcement person. How about being that door greeter? Now, when you're the door greeter, two things happen. We are, you have to be here five minutes early. I had a kid tell me, I have to leave the greeting room early, Mr. M, because I have to be at the door early to greet people. Awesome. That's a guy. I like that. You take that, what is perceived as a negative, and say, what can we do to turn this into a strength? A responsibility, and they'll take pride in, hey, we're dependent on you. 23 kids can't start until this happens. And you'd be surprised. It's not a magic bullet. It doesn't mean there's things that don't work. But you take that energy and use it for the power of good, you'd be surprised what can start happening in that culture of your building, and then supporting that going forward. So working together, um, I just, uh, I, I guess a couple things. All right, we have a great PTO. Um, we have, uh, Looking at walking club, we're looking at you know STEM initiatives, project-based learning, and Lego clubs, and a lot of those different things that I know a lot of people are um, familiar with as well. But I just wanted to showcase or just um, mention it. Uh, one other thing was, uh, and, and I talked about the get up and dance days before school. But our PTO is important. Our, our uh, it was mentioned in the breakout session previous to this was there's so many people that want to help, and and you'd be surprised at what you can accomplish. And I guess. This is a time I'd like to mention too. A lot of these things I'm, I'm talking about, we're, we're at just the start of this. There's a lot to do. And again, it goes slow to go fast. But my, one of my mindsets too was when I look around and I look at maybe quote unquote neat things or cool things happening, a lot of times what you'll find is a charter school. They have lower numbers of students with a lot of money coming in. And so they can do cool things. My, my thought was why can't we in a public school do these things? Yeah, we might have to be a little more creative. We might have to do something different. But there's nothing that can say, why can't we get there? And again, we have there's just as much ability to do that. So when you tap your resources, you'd be surprised what you can do. So here's just an example, too, of it's not a me thing. I'm, I'm talking about a lot of my vision here. But this is not a me thing. This is a we thing. 
And here's a seven o'clock ribbon cutting ceremony in the middle of the school week right here. And this is just, a, there's even more on the other side of this. This is, no one has, this is just, if you want to show up, be awesome to have you here. No one had to be there as far as staff. And you can see um, the turnout there, the staff. That's the kind of people we have in this building. And so that really makes the, the difference. So I talk about also three pillars of success. I mention this because for me, these are three things that are so important. It doesn't matter what type of the school system you're in. If you're in an area that's, that's affluent, if you're in an area that has a high free reduced rate, it, it doesn't matter. These things are in your control. Attendance in life, you show up. You're a five minute early person, not a five minute late person. Think about that, starting that habit in second grade. That will matter when you're an adult working. Attitude, we're in control of our own weather, so to speak. Every day is our choice of what we're going to make this. Yes, circumstances are going to come from life, but we can control that. And effort, 100% maximum effort in everything we do. If you think about those three things, if you have those in check, name a job, you won't be able to be successful. Like, you're going to have to learn things at any job or any time in school, but if you can control these things and make a difference. So, and embracing growth, I'm going to just kind of zip through these last couple quickly. we have about five, five minutes or so left. Um, you just stick with me, but um, successful people are goal setters. Why we looking at um, always working with our kids? What role we're going to have? We're looking at leadership values with our kids. They embrace their own learning and they take control of their own learning. Because when it becomes them leading each other, and we're just kind of on that support role, then we have it. Okay, so that's ultimately what we're after. And so, um, and we have a lot of things within our building and district with our PLC process, our common planning time, we have learning walks coming in, we have district learning walks, even within our building, our teachers are taking time out of their prep time just to go see other teachers in our building because we have great resources right in our building and creating that open feeling of, I want to just learn. I'm not intimidated, I want to learn because I want to get better because it gets my kids better. And so again, getting back to that mindset. So a couple things um, to finish up here. And I have a little quiz for you. Nothing's right there. I think this is an important quote right here. Leadership is an action, not a position. Every time I taught a class when I was a teacher, the first day I stood in front of kids, and I taught uh, at-risk kids a lot too, middle school at-risk kids, tough group of kids. I love those guys. It was really great. I always told them, not one of you, and I told this to my staff, every staff I've ever had, first day, none of you should respect me because of my position. You respect me when I earn that from you how I treat you, when I call up anyone things, the energy I come with, when I say something, I'm going to do it, and you develop those relationships. That's why those dynamic relationships are the key to everything. And so I just think that's an important thing. And then I love Walt Disney. I love Disney, but I just love the mindset of don't, don't let a dream say, oh, well, it'd be nice to dream it, and let's go make it happen if it's, if it's, if it's worth that. So.